War paint. War paint on everyone's face here today. How about that for a game face? Even the ladies get the game faces on here. Barry Barco, number seven, kicks off. High end over end kick. It'll take by J.C. Penny at the one. Down at the 22-yard line, and that's where Vinny Testaverde will take over. Keep in mind now, Testaverde on the sidelines, icing down his left elbow, not his throwing arm. Tended to by a doctor, but he's back on the field. Here is the final reaction here in the crowd as the Florida Auburn score is given. Testaverde now with his left elbow taped and padded. But it has no effect on his throw. It's complete. Big gainer up to the 44-yard line. He really has a sweet touch on the football. You just saw the, his numbers for the season. Those numbers rank him fourth nationally in passing efficiency as we look at the scoring summary. That from the first quarter. What a game it's been so far. Perryman was the man who made the reception. It'll be first down again. This time they go outside, and Darrell Oliver fumbles the football. How close to the sideline was it? Miami retains possession. Keep in mind, it doesn't matter who recovers it if it's out of bounds. Hand off deep in the backfield there to number 37, Oliver, who skips to the outside. He's carrying the ball a little loosely and in the wrong hand. He's hit there by Williams. Now watch the football. Does he ever have possession? I think he Williams. did may have had possession there along the sideline. Very questionable call. Florida State might have earned the football. We do have the benefit of the replay. He has to call it immediately. But it looked like he recovered it. His momentum took him out of bounds. Should have been a turnover. Test averting. First down and 10 going deep. Incomplete. Almost intercepted. Alfonso Williams again. The man who just recovered the fumble out of bounds was the defender and almost had himself an interception. Willie Smith did a good job of knocking that ball away because here he becomes a defensive player. The previous play, which is so controversial, shows Oliver, number 37, bouncing to the outside, carrying the ball loosely. Now watch, he's going to be hit right here by number 17, Eric Williams. The ball comes loose. Now the key play is here with number 26, Alfonso Williams. He covers the football, but does he have possession? Yes. Second and ten. Testaverde under pressure. Evades the pressure nicely and throws it incomplete. Intended for William Smith, 84, but he caught it on a bounce. Boy, Stanley Scott was some kind of coming and putting pressure on Vinny Testaverde. Here's the final that everybody just reacted to in the stadium. Florida upsets fifth-ranked Auburn 14 to 10. You know, Cup, ironically, Florida is the only common opponent these two teams here today have. Your alma mater won. Third and ten. Flag. Testaverde down. But there is a flag. Felton Hayes, 46, made the tackle. Isaac Williams may have been off sides. He was. 45, Isaac Williams. Down lineman for Florida State jumped early. Isaac is one of the stronger members of the team. He bench presses 420 pounds. He can power clean 395 pounds. That means the clean and the old clean and jerk. Off sides. Defense. Still third down. There's the story. Third and five. Again, there's pressure. And again, Testaverde is sacked. 
Isaac Williams, who was penalized a minute ago, first to get there, 45. He's not only strong, Cooper, he's quick. Very quick, and he was excited about playing in this game. I talked to him yesterday. He said sacking a quarterback is his favorite item, and that's what he does right there. The third sack of the day on quarterback Vinny Testaverde, and I said at the top of the show that pressure on Vinny would be the key. Good snap. I punt. Fair catch called for by Deion Sanders. So Florida State will have the ball on the 18-yard line after that 30-yard punt. Vinny Testaverde. There's the situation today. Three sacks. Coming into this ball game, he had been sacked only 15 times in 220 attempts. And with people coming from all sides, it's tough to look for a second receiver when you're looking at defenders. First down straight ahead, Tanner Holloman. Tanner Holloman, the brother of Darren Holloman. Here's Jim Lampley. Stand by two seconds. Jim Lampley, I know he's being a Carolina grad. You like that Maryland score. Tanner Holloman, big opening, right side, 36-yard line. Maryland plays Miami next week in Baltimore. Tanner Holloman, the fullback, on what is known as the fullback trap play off the right side, picks up a good block from Ayanata, number 77, slides to the outside, and makes a good game before Blades, Benny Blades, number 36, brings him down. 36, Ferguson, first down, across the middle. Oh! Incomplete pass interference. Don Ellis, the defender, hit Hassan Jones too early. It'll cost him. This is an easy one to call. Hassan Jones, number 88, running a deep slant in pattern, is hit prematurely there with the right arm of number 29, Don Ellis. We talked about the wide receiver tradition for Florida State. Of course, you go back to you go back to great names like Fred Bolitnikoff, Ron Sellers, Jackie Flowers, Mike Schumann, Barry Smith, Rhett Dawson, and of course pass interference, defense, automatic first down. You know the interesting thing, Lee, about Hassan Jones is he averages over 20 yards a catch. So when he does make the catch. They're big gainers. On the 49, Ferguson, the freshman. Again, across the middle. Hassan Jones, first down. The athletic ability of number 88, Hassan Jones, gets by the first man, slides into the open area of the coverage. Now watch his athletic ability here as he has to hold onto the ball despite the hit of Selwyn Brown, number 32, who nails him in midair. Of course, the last wide receiver that was here was Jesse Hester. He appears to be hurt. Hassan Jones dislocated a shoulder early in the season against Tulane. He's now shaken up after that 20-yard catch. Give straight ahead to Holloman, Tanner Holloman. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on it for you, but they're working down on Hassan Jones and they're working on the shoulder. Second look at Hassan Jones and how he might have re-injured his shoulder here. In midair, he is hit by Selwyn Brown, number 32, and he comes down on the left shoulder. Very easily could have re-injured it. Tough body, soft hands, but he hit awkwardly, and they are working on that shoulder. We've got two minutes, 44 seconds remaining in the first half. The Seminoles lead by three. And it has been some kind of exciting thus far. Both teams wide open, both teams being aggressive, and it's close. Yesterday. If you're a Seminole fan, the good news is Hassan Jones is back. 
They've diagnosed the shoulder. They've looked at it. They've given him the okay to return. Second and seven, the ball on the 26. FSU driving. Wide open. Touchdown, Pat Carter. Freshman Ferguson, reverse pivot, and Carter was wide open, his second touchdown of the year. The play-action fake is what freezes the secondary and enables Ferguson to throw back to his tight end, Carter, who gets behind the secondary for an easy touchdown. Schmidt has never missed an extra point. And this one is good as well. So Ferguson, in his first start, is now 8 for 12, 79 yards, two touchdowns. I can't imagine anything tougher for a defensive player to do than watch the backside tight end. 38 points in the first half contrast greatly to last year's game between these two, when only three field goals were kicked by Florida State, who led at the half 9-0. Barry Barco kicking off for FSU. J.C. Penny, one yard deep, has a hole in some blockers, and trips down at the 29-yard line. Watch how the play fake freezes number 36, Benny Blades, in the secondary as Ferguson spins to his left, wheels around back to his right, and finds Pat Carter, number 85, the tight end up the right seam, all alone for the touchdown. This gives you a better perspective. Watch number 36 in the secondary. Now he's influenced by the play fake to the left, and he can't get back in time to cover Carter up the right seam. Two minutes, 33 seconds remain in the first half. This is Bratton. Well, tempers a little bit. Maintain composure. You know, ironically, as much as we talk about the feud between these two teams, it has been an outstanding rivalry within the state. It has been, as they describe it here, a very friendly rivalry. The one they really like to get, both of these clubs, is Florida. Now success breeds success, and everybody wants it. And right now, Florida, very successful. Second and five. Test averted. Wide open and overthrown. Somehow, Brian Blades, number nine, had worked himself clear down the sidelines. Blades had a step on Mayhew, number 32. The ball was thrown a little wide that time. That was not one of Vinny's better passes. NC State over South Carolina, 21-17. Alabama wins big with Shula at quarterback. Here it's third and five. Testaverde under pressure. Escapes one tackler. And throws as he's going down incomplete. Intended again for Brian Blades. Sometimes the life of a quarterback isn't always as comfortable as it seems. Particularly when you're getting this kind of pressure. And sometimes a hurry can be even more effective than a sack because it's hurries that forced the interception would almost happen that time. Remember Ron McDowell for the Washington Redskins, a friend of mine in Washington. He said when he was playing, if that happened and they didn't get the sack, they used to call it a baggie. <laughs> they hurried to throw and they made something happen. All right. Again, a lot of pressure and not a good punt. This is Deion Sanders. And he runs into a posse. It's been a rough day for that man, Beagles, the punter for Miami. Time in your area. Southeast and Southwest Conference shootouts. Ferguson throws way far to the right side, and it's incomplete. That's a 50-yard pass, and it had it been caught, it would have been a two-yard gain intended for Phillip Bryant. There's the LSU score we were telling you about. Georgia, big, big win over Tulane. Green Wave continues to struggle. Tennessee back on the winning track. Virginia Tech down at Blacksburg. Howard Schnellenberger 
Got a win today. Citadel leading 10-3. Second and 10. Floyd, two yards. Victor Floyd carries for the Seminoles. Big number 91, Rod Carter, out of Fort Lauderdale, made the tackle. Good job of running there by Victor Floyd, who is one of the fastest men on the team. He's a burner. He can fly. to tick away in the first half down to the waning moments 123 Ferguson to throw avoids the pressure complete first down FSU Herb Gaynor with the catch then a test of early the junior can only watch as the freshman works meticulously for Florida State that's an amazing play by Ferguson as he avoids pressure from Stubbs and McVeigh and watch how he slides to his left, wheels now, and throws back across field to his right. It's gain of number three who makes the reception, and that's a remarkable play for the 18-year-old freshman. Under a minute to go now. Floyd picks up two. The thing that's most impressive about Chip Ferguson, who is a true freshman, is the fact that he threw an interception early, came back, and has thrown trem shown tremendous composure thus far. By his own admission, he was very nervous. He learned of this starting assignment on Tuesday. They were hampered in practice this week because of the rain. Despite all that, Chip Ferguson is now 9 of 14 in the passing department for 96 yards and two touchdowns. Holding. Offense. Holding Still first down. So that's a big penalty against Florida State as they were marching down inside Miami territory. Now they move back to the 48. Their own 48 with 45 seconds left. Gain of two. How can anybody that owns a snake and plays with this boa constrictor all day, be afraid of a football game or be nervous to go out on the field. That's his pet, Bo. Well, now you just revealed something to me. Tell me more about that. He's a snake charmer, huh? That's it. He likes. We've, we've seen some of those in college football through the years. Said he carries Bo with him everywhere he goes. Bo as in Bo constrictor. Bo constrictor. 36 seconds left, Floyd, right side. Victor just move it up down the middle of the field and try to give Schmidt a chance if they can with 30 seconds left. Now, I remind you that Derek Schmidt, the place kicker for Florida State, has a strong leg. His longest ever is 54 yards against Miami a year ago. He has had two 51-yarders this year. Speaking of Bo, not as Bo a constrictor, but as in Bo Jackson, how about how Florida contained Bo today? Tough day for Bo. Look at this, as the other players now slapping hands, giving a little bit of confidence. He's loose, smiling. He knows the game's on television. I'll tell you an interesting uh, statistic. I have covered the Seminoles off and on since 1967, and I have never seen them lose. I told Bobby Bowden that yesterday. I said, I don't want to jinx you. But you know, I've never seen the Seminoles lose all the games that I've covered them. That goes back to covering a Memphis State game at Memphis in 1967 when Kim Hammond was the quarterback. They had a great wide receiver at that time named Ron Sellers. I'm sure you remember him. Sure, jingle joints. Yeah. Scored a touchdown on my brother Mike at Maryland. Can't put anything over on you, Tim Brandt. Mike had the same problem with Maryland I did. Slow. <laughs> 30 seconds remain here in Tallahassee. Florida State leads 24-14. That's the time remaining in the first half. Ferguson now on third and 14. Try to get Schmidt in position. A lot of pressure backside. And oh my, Ferguson is really tagged. Dan Stubbs, 96. Daniel Stubbs, 
The caption here reads, Welcome to Division 1A football, Chip Ferguson. That's from Dan Stubbs, number 96, who comes around on the blind side of the quarterback. Now Miami calls a timeout with 14 seconds left. Love to watch these two coaches play a little chess game with each other down below. Both coaches very aggressive, very outspoken, very animated. Chess game, all right. On to Queen Four. Here's Jimmy Johnson. Oklahoma State, his first head coaching job. He turned things around there, now maintaining a fine program here at Miami. Six and a half years as a head coach. Delayed and coached for Frank Royals. Part of the famous Royals-Arkansas connection. Frank's uh, guys are dominating in Division 1A football. We'll talk more about that. Johnson, Hatfield, Jones, Switzer, Akers, Fry. Six coaches influenced by our colleague Frank Broyles in Division 1A football. Well, there's the punter, Lewis Berry. I don't know what the holdup is now. 14 seconds left. They adjust the clock. That's what it was as you look at Bobby Bowden. 79 31 and 2 at FSU and would love to have the 80th win of his career against interstate rival Miami so they do adjust the clock 32 seconds remain well, now what do they do it to it they've got me confused I think the coaches are confused but now they're set to go they decide on 18 seconds Barry is the punter. Brett Perryman and David Kintai are the deep backs for Miami. Pressure. Taken at the five. That's David Kintai. And he runs out of bounds with nine seconds left. And I mean he was run out of bounds and almost up into the cheap seats. Well, remember that Testaverde can throw the ball about 70 or 80 yards in the air. He has a tremendously strong arm. So now he can throw one down here and hope for a long completion to set up a field goal. Or one of those deflected passes, which they know so much yep. about. It was Doug Flutie who threw one against them last year. However, you can't hope for an interference call anymore. They've changed the rule. Eight seconds remain. Give inside is Oliver, and that should do it. The crowd appreciates it. I think they've enjoyed it as much as we have. We hope you have, too. Miami has proven something. They are big, they're strong, they're fast, quality team. Florida State has really, really gone after them here. Florida State two with one loss, both with six and one records. And Florida State, I think, was ready. Well, we talked about the offensive show at the top, but also that the key would be in pressuring quarterback Vinny Testaverde. And Florida State has been effective in doing that. They've sacked Testaverde three times. They've heard him on numerous other occasions. And as a result of that, they have been able to control the football game here in the first half. So they have excited the home crowd at Doak Campbell Stadium of more than 60,000 fans. Those 60,000 now paying tribute to Dick Hauser, the manager of the world champion. And what a royal greeting he's getting here. Hauser hopefully will come up and join us sometime during the half. And indeed, the state of Florida could not be more proud of one of its favorite sons. Please welcome back the manager of the world champion Kansas City Royals, Dick Hauser. Dick Hauser played here at Florida State, 1957. He coached here before the Yankees signed him. And now he manages the world champions. 
Shortstop, pretty good one. 1956, 57, and 58. There he is. What a World Series it was. To Motley for the title. There it is. Dick Hauser, the manager, the Kansas City Royals, the world champions, and he is being honored here in Tallahassee, Florida. Going against Vinny Testaverde, one of the premier quarterbacks in America. Chip Ferguson is a true freshman, and again, we tell you, the most impressive thing thus far in this ballgame has been the way he came back after throwing an interception and really showed some great composure. Well, he has great numbers, too. 10 of 15, 99 yards, two touchdowns. He's out past Testaverde. He's 9 of 19, 127 yards, two touchdowns. Testaverde, of course, very strong arm, very composed, the kind of guy that can come back and make a lot of things happen in the second half. This game far from over, but thus far it has been really some kind of exciting. 14 in a wild game. First time I have seen that since 1972 when Auburn did that on consecutive kicks against Alabama. It was Davis who went in for the touchdown. John Hadley was the guy that got the block. Now here's Chip Ferguson, the freshman. It's the play action fake to the fullback that freezes Blades in the secondary, number 36, and it's Pat Carter, the tight end, going up the right seam, number 85, Pat Carter for a 26-yard touchdown, and we had some kind of first half, Tim Brown. Only his second touchdown reception of the year. He has a touchdown here today. And Florida State has the lead as we head into the second half. It's 24-14. And by Nikon, we take the world's greatest pictures. On the left is number 20, Keith Ross. On the right, 44, Chuck Wells of Florida State. Mark Sealing kicks off for Miami to start the second half, and this one is way deep in the end zone, taken by Keith Ross. What a pleasure it was to talk to Dick Hauser at halftime. These are the first half stats, Lee Gross Cup. Well, we talked at the top of the show about the importance of pressuring Vinny Testaverde. And you look at the rushing yards there for Miami, minus eight. And you get a sense of how they have been able to shut him down, the passing yards totaling 127. But there is better balance there for Florida State, and as a result of that, they lead 186 to 119 in total yardage. Hassan Jones, who was shaken up in the first half, doesn't start the second. It's Herb Gaynor, Philip Ryan. First down, Florida State, and the Seminoles jump. Chip Ferguson is the freshman quarterback who was simply outstanding in the first half. 10 of 15 for 99 yards. Defensive talent. Three sophomores and a freshman. Big gainer, Floyd. Out across midfield, still on his feet to the 36-yard line. And Florida State didn't lose anything at halftime. They come out fired up and strong to start the second half first. 21-yard gain by Floyd. He now has 59 on the day as Hassan Jones comes back in for Florida State. Ball on the 36, first down. The freshman, Ferguson, gain of five. Here's the offense. Ferguson we talked all about true freshman there. Floyd, 59 yards, first half. Cletus Jones, the fullback, Herb Gaynor, and Darren Holloman, the wide receivers. Carter, tight end. A couple of big catches, including a touchdown in the first half in the offensive line. Second and seven. And there's a flag. Cletus Jones is the ball carrier. And they love their football here in Tallahassee. Cletus Jones, the ball carrier. Flag. At the 42. It's against the Seminoles, holding. Cletus Jones, of course, is the man who has a big play in the second quarter on a fake punt. He being the up back, moves the ball into uh, scoring territory for the Seminoles. Floyd, you just mentioned his numbers, 59 yards and 10 carries. Holding, offense. Still second down. What down is it? Three, Gil Gelbick. Makes the call. 
just underway. Second half of play, Tim Brand and Lee Groska. Florida State leads by 10, second and 17, the ball on the 29. Floyd, and again he has a big hole on the right side. George Myra Jr. made the tackle, number 45, for Miami. What a career his dad had at Miami. Aiden Fry happened to scratch and claw in that game if he's going to come back to win it. They've had some uh, thrillers there, but that's tough. Well, Air Force is still undefeated, still have a couple there, but I'll tell you what, you're not going to see many unbeaten clubs anymore in college football. There is parity now with the limitation on scholarship. Third and eight from the 37. Where's the ball? Let's go. Ferguson has it. He's down. Trip coming out from center. How do you? Did you ever do that as a quarterback? Yep. It can happen. Back away too quickly. Don't ride that center. You don't get the ball properly. You're in trouble. Barry kicks it away. Perriman and Kintyre, the deep backs. It's going to be David Kintyre, the receiver for Miami. Great coverage. So after a great first half, it's a little bit sloppy here the second half. That 45-yard punt gives Miami back the ball for the first time this half. Three and five. Big game in the NFC East, and I guarantee you the Giants, the Redskins, and the Eagles will be watching that one closely, as we will. First down, Miami. Testaverde. Gone long. Blades across midfield to the 44-yard line. And Brian Blades and Testaverde pick up where they left off. Martin Mayhew made the tackle. This is the Florida State defensive unit. Isaac Williams, the nose guard, Todd Stroud. Stroud, 233 pounds, strong. Gerald Nichols, 265. He's got good feet. Jax is 230. These are all young players, except for Daryl Gray. He's a senior. Freddie Jones is a junior. He's an underclassman. McGowan is a sophomore. And on and on they go. Underclassmen. Again, same situation in the secondary as Miami. Three sophomores and a freshman. Starting to rain now. Testaverde on first down. Plenty of time. Has the receiver complete. Gain of four. Here's Martin Mayhew. He's the guy that makes things happen. Broke up four passes last week. Eric Williams, Stanley Shiver, and Greg Newell. Shiver is the freshman. The rest are all sophomores. Second and seven. Pressure, backside. Testaverde escapes. Be all. Stanley Shiver had to come up and make the tackle. But again, Testaverde found a lot of pressure. Testaverde has struggled, injured his left elbow in the first half. He has a pad on it now. Oliver Highsmith, Blades, and Irvin. Those are the skilled positions. Down deep, you've got Willie Smith. He's a good one. Then you go down in the trenches. These guys, all juniors, underclassmen, only one. Berticelli had experience prior to this year. Third and five. First down, Hurricanes. William Smith, the tight end, just dragged across the middle, came underneath the linebackers. That's a way to silence the crowd, and that was a good call and good execution that time by Testaverde as he looked for his tight end, Smith, on a curl out pattern got into the open area of the coverage, and that's the type of play that can work effectively either against man or zone. Good, good protection there. Smith, number 84, curls to the outside. Hits in front of Hayes, number 46. Eight-yard pickup, ball on the 32. First down, flags. The pass is complete to Brian Blades, but there is a flag. against Florida State. Florida State's been a little bit sloppy here to start the second half. Wow. 
Wow is right. That's some indication of how the Canes have been in the third quarter and how they have dominated their opponents. They're a big, strong physical team. They can wear you down, and they have the firepower. All right, now that we've said that, let me tell you about the other side of the line of scrimmage. Florida State has shut out four of seven teams in the second half this year. The only Auburn has scored more than one touchdown after intermission. That's an interesting play. First and five, and Testaverde can't hear. Testaverde now is going to talk things over with Jimmy Johnson. Says, hey, coach, things are loud here. What do we do now? Miami is charged with the timeout. When we were talking to Vinny Testaverde yesterday, I asked him about the crowd. I asked him about how loud it gets in here. And he says, hey, we've worked it out. I've got hand signals for the wide receivers in case they can't hear me if I audibleize. He's got first and five here and gives it up the middle to Oliver. Look at a leg drive on Oliver. He's going to be up close to a first down. Paul McGowan made the stop for Florida State. See where it's marked. First down, Miami. Oliver, one of four runners that we spotlighted at the top of our show. These runners are pretty much interchangeable. As we look at Osceola and his horse, Renegade, Oliver Williams, Highsmith, and Bratton have added up to about 1,000 yards rushing coming into today's game. Oliver replaces Warren Williams. First down at the 20, the pitch back. It is Oliver, and he picks up a few. Darrell Oliver, carry for Miami. Paul McGowan, right there. A very important comparison, something that we have been talking about right along. Vinny Testaverde has more yards, but look at the numbers on Chip Ferguson. 10 of 15 for 99 yards, two touchdowns, and only one interception as well, Testaverde has the two touchdowns. Second and six from the 16. Testaverde, complete. Plenty of room. William Smith to the two. William Smith, the tight end, worked himself free. And when the tackle was missed, he picked up another chunk down to the two-yard line. I watch this because I think it points out how strong Vinny Testaverde is. He's backpedaling. He's throwing while under a lot of pressure and still gets the ball thrown with a lot of authority to William Smith, number 84, his tight end, who takes the ball down to the six-yard line before Shiver brings him down. 14-yard gain, first and goal, Hurricanes at the two. Right side, Highsmith, touchdown. Alonzo Highsmith in for the Hurricane score. I like this call to the fullback, Alonzo Highsmith, number 30. Get the ball wide to your best ball carrier on first down. Get him some running room. Good block there by the fullback, Oliver, number 37. The lead block there springs him. A look from ground level, and you see that block at a better angle. Look at the stiff arm right there on number 32, Mayhew, which gets him into the end zone. Cox with the extra point. And with eight minutes, 15 seconds remaining in the third the quarter of play, Go Fest Campbell Miami Stadium, 21. Florida State 24, Miami 21. Very exciting football game. But this is the kind of game I like because of the fact that you have two teams who can throw the football, they can move on the ground, and they also have exciting defense. A little bit of rain we have has stopped. The clouds have broken. The crowd has risen, and Ferguson has it second and 10 for Florida State. This is Floyd, and he's nailed. Victor Floyd, freshman out of Pensacola, Florida, big first half. Ball on the 20. Miami blitz. 
Texas. Pass across the middle, almost intercepted. Oh, Chip Ferguson was lucky. He was under pressure from Dan Stubbs, number 96. The pressure is what makes him throw high. Dan Stubbs is coming around on his blind side. Right there. See the pressure right there? That's what makes him throw the ball high, and he nearly gets a pick. Ferguson now 10 for 17, 99 yards. Lewis Berry will kick it away. David Kintai, Brett Perryman, the deep backs, and this ball is sailing deep. What a punt. It's taken by Perryman, and he runs out of bounds on the 36, 37-yard line. So with 7-17 left in the third quarter of play, Miami gets good field position after that 51-yard punt. Well, that's the weather situation here in Tallahassee. See that rainbow? Probably a pot of gold at the end of it for whoever wins this game because they're going to a New Year's Eve Bowl. First and 10 at the 38. Miami has the ball. This is Vinny Testaverde. Under pressure. Goes down again. Isaac Williams, number 45, put the pressure on it. He's from Sanford, Florida. And that is sack number four on the day for Vinny Testaverde as Isaac Williams, who had six tackles for loss coming into today's game. We mentioned his strength. You also saw his quickness right there. Coming up next Saturday in a special edition of ABC's Wide World of Sports to see the World Gymnastics Championship from Montreal, Canada. Olympic men's all-around champion Koji Gushigan will be there along with Tim Daggert, Scott Johnson of the United States. The U.S. won the gold medal in L.A. Get the chance to see that on Wide World. Testa Verde now, second and 14. Throws one tackler aside. Now scrambles back to the right side and throws incomplete. But Stanley see, Scott, number 83, is the man who applied the pressure. The whip. The whip. But see that continuing pressure? We talked about that at the top of the show. Well, we laugh a little bit about that whip. Last night at our production meeting, Lee Grosscup came in and whipped us all into shape. Told us if anybody got out of hand, they'd get it. Cupper, you're tough. Got to add a little discipline to our production meeting. Battle cry goes up here. Florida State in third and 14. What can Testa Verde do? Incomplete, almost a great catch by William Smith. What an effort by him. 84, William Smith. Pretty good protection this time. Now Smith slipped right there. Had he not slipped right there, Tim, I think he could have caught that football. There is a flag. Holding. Offense declined. Fourth down. Remember, we talked about the shape of the turf. Very wet here. They had a helicopter out here yesterday morning to blow the water off the field. Well, Miami has made this an adventure all afternoon. The punny game, Jeff Beagles. Again, he's under pressure. This one, he drives a mile. This is Deion Sanders at the 10. And he gets almost back to the 20. We'll put it down on the 19. Well, the Seminoles were beating the drums. They're on the warpath. They want a touchdown now. They want more on the board. They need it. Meanwhile, they've continued to harass quarterback Vinny Testaverde. They have sacked him four times for a total of 46 yards. Great punt that time, 52 yards. The return was only nine. Loud crowd by the scoreboard. They've got a spear that lights up according to how loud the crowd is. And it's been near the top all afternoon. Ferguson on first down goes to the sideline and up. Included, or intended rather, for Hassan Jones. But he was pushed out of bounds, stepped out of bounds. And that's legal. As long as they ride him only in the front first yep. five yards. Yep. That's legal to there. That's getting close. It's a fade pattern to the outside. I think Hassan sensed that pressure coming and he was distracted. Obviously, you that can't go out of bounds it. and come back in. There's the spear. There it is. Here it goes. Whoa. Here it goes. Oh, yeah. They get a big play and it'll be lit at the top. Second and 10. 
flags fly. Ferguson. Cletus Jones was the intended receiver. Well, I wonder who Vinny's talking to. He's obviously calling for help. He might be asking for a few more blockers. He's been sacked four times. Offsides. Defense still second down. Well, that'll make it second and five to 24. Reverse pivot, option play. Victor Floyd. I'm telling you, when you can hear a lick like that. Whew. You know they're popping when you can hear it like that. Either they, that or we're too close. They call that their trap option. It's a little whirly bird. The quarterback reverse pivots, fakes to the fullback, and then he is optioning the corner. That means that he's going to keep it himself or he's going to pitch to the trailing back. Now, we don't think of the I formation usually as an option formation, but it can be very effective. 554 remaining. Third period, third and three. Seminole. Ferguson, backside pressure. Over the middle. Should be a flag. There's not. How can they not call that? Well, I'll tell you, Benny Blades is happy they didn't. Benny Blades is celebrating. Oh, that's the reason. The ball was tipped, they say. Watch the pressure first, Tim. See this? They're starting to establish the pass rush now. Stubbs is in there right on him. Well, if that's the case, if the ball was tipped, it's not passing. Now, here's the next important thing. See this? See, let's watch. Ball is tipped. Ball is tipped right there. Good call. Kentai takes it on a run and runs out of bounds. Well, I apologize to the official then. Being very astute. Number 45, George Myra Jr., son of the old quarterback, is the middle linebacker in the 4-3 defense, and he tips the ball right there. No, I don't think it was no. Meyer. It was Jerome Brown. I take it back. It's Jerome Brown, the man who had such a great game against Oklahoma. Brown is 6'3", 275 pounds, and he's got a big bear paw. From the 44, first down. Bratton. You know, Bratton became famous, scored a touchdown with 28 seconds left against Boston College last year, scored four touchdowns, as a matter of fact, in that game. But that's the touchdown that set up the play that Doug Flutie hit Phelan with, the miracle. Second and 11, the draw play. Got two. I said at the very top of the show that this was a pick em game. I felt that the teams were well balanced, that they were well coached, and if there was any edge, it would be the fact that Miami had an experienced quarterback. But Chip Ferguson, the freshman, has been impressive. He has met the challenge thus far. Non stop war chant. Third and seven, big play, backside pressure. Flag flies, and the ball is dropped. William Smith, 84, was the intended receiver, but there is a flag, and it could be holding against Miami. It is. Holding. Offense declined. Fourth down. State. Jeff Beagles, 38 from Miami. Out of bounds as the war chant continues to be played here 
Let's go back to New York. And there were seven minutes, 18 seconds to go, and Kerwin Bell lofted this eight-yard touchdown pass to Ray McDonald. The Gators made it stand up. They haven't lost in 18 outings, and they beat Auburn today at Auburn, 14 to 10. Yours again. Ironically, Jim, it is the only team that both of these play, these teams play here. Of course, Miami lost to Florida in the opener, and Florida State gets its shot at the Gators in the last game of the season. It'll be second and eight, four minutes remain, third period of play. Ball on the 27, Florida State has the ball. Victor Floyd, and I think the linebackers are starting to key on Floyd. Every time he gets it, he draws a crowd. Good second and third effort by Victor Floyd, the tailback. We talked about the importance of the tailback position at Florida State and how there would be a tandem working today in Floyd and Smith. Floyd has been dominating. I tried to think of the term a minute ago, common opponent, but I couldn't do it. I think I had one too many Rydells under my chin. <laughs> Ferguson sacked. Second sack of the day against Ferguson. Miami came that time playing. Hey, that's Kevin lunch. Fagan. Kevin Fagan in the game. Kevin Fagan, the great one who's been injured, number 95. Now watch the pressure that he applies to the blind side of Chip Ferguson. And that's a big plus for the Hurricanes because Fagan is the man they figured would be the most dominating defensive lineman for them. And he's been slowed down by injury. Lewis Berry's punt, and it's a dandy. Kent tied at the 30. Out to the 34 and fumbles the football. Stays inbound. Did it hit the line as the key, or was Bear or was Kintai down? We'll wait for the call. David Kintai on the reception for By the Miami. reaction of the crowd, they say he was down. The ground cannot cause a fumble. the left sideline on an 11-yard return. Kintai, number 11, bounces to the outside here. Yep, the ground does cause the fumble, and the ground cannot cause the fumble and have it uh, be lost to the other team. Almost as if the ball had eyes. Stand and bounce. That's David Kintai. They're working on him. That's the burden. Incomplete. First down pass was intended for Michael Irvin. But Deion Sanders, the defender, stripped him of the football. Look at that sky. Glorious, glorious night in Tallahassee, Florida. Coming up next week, the two games you'll see. Check your local listings for the game and time in your area. Alabama, LSU, and Baton Rouge, Arkansas, and Baylor. You're going to like that action. The war chant continues. The blitz is on. Second and ten. Incomplete. Alonzo Highsmith had a caravan in front of him and dropped the football. Alonzo's going to wish he had this one back. Look at this. The safety blitz is on. Everybody's coming. It's a perfect time for a screen. And Testaverde throws the ball to Highsmith. Look at the convoy he would have had. Had he been able to hold on to this football? Oh, my. Spectacular. Two twenty-five remain in the third period. Third and ten. Testaverde drops the ball and picks it up. And he's sacked for the fifth time. This time, Isaac Williams is the guy who made the tackle along with Todd Stroud. And this four chant is nonstop.
Deion Sanders with a fair catch. So again, what I said at the very top of the show, that the key would be to pressure Vinny Testaverde. They have now sacked him five times for minus 53 yards, seven yards minus on that last sack. The remains of Hurricane Juan has left a beautiful sky here in Tallahassee. 39-yard punt gives Florida State good field position. Here's the top 10. Ohio State now leading Iowa, fourth quarter. Iowa unbeaten until this day. Penn State wins again. As usual, it's close. Nebraska rolls up 41 to three. Ferguson, 0 for 4 this half, wants to throw on first down and has Hassan Jones. Again, the talented young freshman goes to work to his favorite receiver, Hassan Jones, who cuts in front of Don Ellis, number 29, on a deep slant pattern. That ball was thrown just right. Look at the numbers on Hassan. 3-44, one touchdown. First down, runs the ball. And Tony Smith may have lost a yard. Michigan and Illinois, 3-3 final. What a surprise that is, at least to me. Florida wins, Air Force. Fisher to Barry, what a year he's having for that wishbone offense. Oklahoma, 48 to six. Notre Dame leads Navy, 27 to 10. That game in the third quarter. Ferguson tucks it away across midfield into Miami territory and battles his way down to the 45 yard line. And there's a flag way behind the play up by the hash market midfield. A little extracurricular activity perhaps. Personal foul against Florida State. And that's a mental error that I'm sure Bobby Bowden wants no parts of. He'll talk to the official now and get the name and number of the player that was involved. And have some words with him a little bit later. That's costly. Ferguson fought his heart out to make that extra yard. It's personal foul. Offense still second down. at second and 30 now for Florida State. Much bigger chore than it would have been. Ferguson unleashes the pass and it's intercepted. Colbert Bain, number 18, was the man who had Phillip Bryant covered pretty well. Took the inside hip pocket of the receiver, got the ball at his highest point, and made the interception. The pressure first. Now let's watch Dan Stubbs, number 96, who has been in Ferguson's face all day. That's what really hurts right there because he throws it too soon. And as he goes for Bryant, it's Bain, number 18, who is standing here in perfect position. Now watch this. He leaps high in the air to make the interception. Ferguson struggling a little bit. Now in the second half, last play of this half, or this quarter rather. Across the middle, fake completion. Again, it's Blades who makes the catch. And Deion Sanders was a defender. So as the third quarter ends, Miami now with a big play. Oh, that's the end of the third quarter. We'll be right back with more college football action for you after this commercial message and a word from your local stations.